My name is Kat, and I am an instructor for the Community Theater Program at Arts for All of Palm Beach County, and I'm going to be bringing you an acting lesson today, a way to keep your skills sharp, because you know what they say, you don't use it, you lose it, and that's true, so let's work some acting skills. I would like to preface by saying that I highly encourage you to start the session with a warm-up. Now, I did do another virtual lesson completely dedicated to warming up our instrument, right? To getting ourselves warmed up physically, our breath, and our speech and diction. So before you do this, it would be a great idea for you to go back and do that other lesson first. That's my two cents. I'm not there with you, but I do encourage it. Um, all right, so I will assume that you have gone ahead and done that. Welcome back. We are going to be working acting exercises. So the first exercise that I'm going to start with today is an exercise called 10 entrances. Here's how this is going to work. I'm going to give you a simple line of dialogue, and then I'm going to give you 10 different emotions. And I would like you to say that line of dialogue, that simple sentence, with those different emotions. Now, there are some very important things to notice. One is that when we are saying a line, it's not just the line we're saying that is going to convey our emotions. It's what happens before we say that line and after we say that line. So we don't just say the line and are finished. I want us to think about our emotional state just before that line, that's called the moment before, and the emotional state continuing after we say that line. That's the moment after. Uh, Stanford Meisner has a famous quote, and he is quoted as saying, an ounce of behavior is worth a pound of words. And that is true. An actor's job is not to speak the words, but to behave them, right? To really act them with emotion. And that's what we are going to be looking at today. How, it's not just what we say, but how we say it. It's not just what we do, but how we do it. All right. So here's how today is going to work. I should preface this. You will notice that I have three different exercises for you today. With each one, I'm going to do a brief demonstration of each exercise, just so that I know you are clear on what it is I'm asking you to do. I'm not going to do all of them because this is not about my doing it, it's about your doing it. All right, so the first exercise, 10 entrances. I'm going to give you a line, and then I'm going to have you do that line 10 different ways, and I will give you the emotion. I encourage you to enter and exit before each line. I will now demonstrate that for you, just a few. So let's say, for example, the word is, the sentence is, good morning. The sentence is, good morning. I'm going to deliver that line as though I'm in a great mood. I'm feeling happy, all right? And I'm going to actually leave the frame, come on, deliver the line, and exit, all right? This is the line, good morning, and I'm feeling happy. Good morning. Not bad. <laughs> and now I'm going to deliver that same line as though I am suspicious. Good morning. Notice how, how I'm feeling before and after the line is just as important, if not more important, than the line itself. I'm just going to do two more examples. I'm now going to do this as though I am nervous. Good morning. All right, and actually, I said I would do that two more times, but I feel like you get it, good. So what is going to happen now, is I'm not going to be doing this with you, um, I encourage you to go back 
can do the line good morning with the emotions that I just gave. I'm not going to give you an entirely new sentence. It's raining outside. All right, your sentence is it's raining outside. Just to commit that to memory, go ahead and repeat that for yourself out loud a couple of times. It's raining outside. It's raining outside. It's raining outside. Good, you got it. Now, I'm going to give you an emotion and on your own time, I would like you to enter the space, deliver that line and then exit. I will try to go at a reasonable pace, but friendly reminder that you can pause me. Please don't allow me to rush your work. Pause me if you have to, okay? The first way I would like you to say the line, it's raining outside, is as though you are feeling happy. Good. I would now like you to enter and exit your stage space, saying that same line, you are feeling sad. Now you are going to say it's raining outside as though you are feeling angry. Nice. Friendly reminder to take your time before the line and after the line to feel what you're feeling. Okay? We don't want to just act on the line itself. I would now like you to say it's raining outside as though you are feeling excited. Now, I would like you to say it as though you are feeling shy. It's interesting to note how much of acting is nonverbal, isn't it? So much of it is about our facial expressions and our physicality. All right, I would now like you to say it's raining outside as though you are terrified. Now, as though you are confident and brave. Now you are going to say, it's raining outside, feeling silly, whatever that means to you. would now like you to say, it's raining outside, feeling suspicious. And now, it's raining outside and you are nervous. You feel nervous about it. And one more for good measure, this might be an extra one. You are surprised. All right, friendly reminder, I do encourage you to pause me between so that I'm not rushing your work, right? That is the benefit of being able to have me on computer. <laughs> pause me when you need to. Good, now something else I want you to notice is how similar some of the emotions we just did can be nervous, shy, scared, suspicious, are all sort of similar, but they are different. So challenge yourself to be sure that emotions that seem similar in nature are different and not just the same emotion repeated. You can even go back and see how different they are. All right. That is 10 entrances. That is a great exercise for actors to use. It's something you can practice on your own at home. And if you'd like, you can even record yourself and ask yourself, am I fully embodying the emotion before the line and holding it after, right? All right, the next exercise we are going to be doing is an exercise 
on listening. So all of acting is really responding. It is reacting, right? And a lot of acting will just be somebody listening to something that someone else is saying and never actually talking at all. So what is going to happen is I'm going to have you pretend to be having a conversation with someone. You are not going to talk. All you're going to do is listen. But I want that to hit you differently so that what you're listening to will make you feel different ways. So here's my little demonstration portion. I'll get close so you can see. So if you and I are having a conversation and you are telling me something disturbing, I am very concerned about what you're talking about. Maybe something tragic happened to someone I care about. I might listen like this. Right? Now, if I'm listening to something that I think is kind of funny, I might listen like this. If I'm listening to something that I think is just really juicy gossip and I'm fascinated and a little bit surprised, If I'm listening to something that I think is not real. Right? So we are always listening as actors. If we are on stage and I'm acting across a partner, just because I'm not talking doesn't mean I'm not acting. Even though I might have heard what my partner has said so many times, I have to pretend as though it's the first time I've ever heard it and let that hit me and react emotionally, even if I don't have any lines. Another place we'll be called upon to do this is on film and television. So sometimes you'll notice as you're watching television and movies, there might be a close up on someone's face. The scene isn't actually taking place then, it's a cutaway shot of that person reacting to the news, right? And so we get to practice that as actors. All right, so now it's your turn. I would like you to pretend you are having a conversation with someone. In this part of the conversation, you are not talking, you are just listening. And you feel shocked by what you hear. Go. Okay. Now, you are going to take in that information, and I want you to think that what you hear is funny. Now, what you are listening to is fascinating. Now I want you to pretend that what your partner is telling you is boring. Now I want you to pretend that what you are hearing makes you feel very sad. Now, what you are listening to makes you angry. Good. Friendly reminder, you can pause me if I'm moving too quickly for you. Those are just some emotions. Go back and practice with lots of different emotions, right? Um, maybe someone is telling you some bad news, some good news, something you don't believe, something that makes you nervous, all sorts of things. Something you're excited to hear, some juicy gossip, um, something you've been waiting to hear that turns out to not be that interesting right? You can give yourself different scenarios. All right, our last exercise that we're going to be doing is character-based. I'm going to give you an exercise I call waiting at the bus stop, and I'm going to give you different conditions and characters. So all you are going to be doing, friend, is waiting. You have no lines. You don't even have to be that physical. You are waiting for a bus, something most of us do or have done. 
And I'm going to give you different conditions. The condition is an outside factor that influences you. As an example, if I'm waiting for the bus and it's cold out, I'm just going to allow that to affect me physically. Or it's hot. That's going to change how I wait for the bus. Or if I have a headache. Maybe the sun is in my eyes. Right? That kind of thing. It's an outside factor, or it could be a character choice or like an age or something that will affect how you're doing what you're doing. So now it's your turn. I would like you to pause this and go back and pretend you were just waiting, just waiting for a bus with the three that I just did. It's hot outside. It's cold outside. You have a headache because the sun is directly in your eye. Okay, now I would like you to pretend you are waiting for the bus and you are very tired. You have had no sleep. Okay, and now you are waiting for the bus and you are five years old. How does a five-year-old wait for the bus, an energetic five-year-old? Okay. Now you are waiting for the bus and there are a lot of people around you and it is very crowded. All right. And now you feel kind of sick. You ate something that does not agree with your stomach. You can also apply the same emotions that we did in the past few exercises to waiting for the bus. How do I wait for the bus if I'm angry? If I feel happy? All of those other beautiful emotions. So that's what I have planned for you today. As an actor, it is important that we keep our acting skills alive and you don't need to be in a class with other people to practice our acting skills. This is something you can do on your own. Um, go back and do these again and challenge yourselves to find different ways to embody those emotions or come up with your own emotions or your own characters or your own outside factors. It can also be fun to do with a friend or a buddy and you can take turns. All right, friends, that's all I have for you today. I hope you are having an amazing day and that you're just doing well. All right, take care of yourself. This has been another acting class with Kat. Bye friends.